Anthony Ferraro, and Mancina, two blind guys collide to bring you Four Bad Eyes Podcast. And we're back, Four Bad Eyes, after three hours of sound check. Sound check and check and check and chickity check check. And check it again. Oh, we, uh... Hopefully we sound crispy and nice. Yeah, sound better than the last episode. Yeah. Um, Dan got a new computer. New pewter. Pewter, pewter. Pewter, so that's a big deal. And uh, we just spent, not exaggerating, I think we started at, what, 9.30? Yeah. And now it's, what time is it? It's like 12.20. So we went to like 11, like 12 o'clock. Yeah, we went till 12. And <sighs> Yeah. Dude, I, I almost didn't want to record one now because yeah, we're just so we burnt, just dude. Went to bed after, man. It was. <laughs> uh, but if I lay down right now, I would not. I wouldn't fall asleep for four hours. I'd, I'd be so stimulated from that. Just, yeah, that's but, the thing. And I remember when I first got my computer, even just learning voiceover on the Mac was so different than learning it on the like phone. Mm-hmm. And because the phone's all like swipe and stuff, and oh, it's so easy on the <coughs> phone so iPad. Different when you just get lost. Like, I've been on a website, right? And you just trying to go back, like back one frame, like yeah. page, and it took me, I think, thirty minutes to figure it out. <laughs> and, and you're so exhausted. Like the mental exhaustion you put into this is like, dude, I'm so done at the end of it. I'm spent. Like it's like three tasks it- is. It's yeah. equivalent to someone doing a whole day of work on their computer. Yeah, it's literally yeah, it's like sitting in a classroom for three hours or like working like hard. Yeah, dude, mentally exhausting. <laughs> I can't even explain it. the The moments I've had on my computer of just freaking out, like really, <laughs> where you're like, like I'd even say to you a couple times, like, "Yo, don't don't get frustrated. It's all right. We're gonna get through this." Cool. Like, because I remember when I was trying to learn how to just send an invite on Zoom, Dan had to, like, walk mm-hmm. through it. <laughs> and it took probably two and a half hours on the phone of just him sitting there patient, like, explaining it. Yeah. And I just kept, like, you know, trial and error trying to figure this out. Because, but... yeah, on the computer, you just, you can only scroll left and right, like, one cell at a time. Or you can jump, like, through links and stuff on web pages, but... On the phone, you can put your finger on the screen and jump and look all around the screen. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's easier to just kind of uh, browse around. And yeah. this is just so tedious. And I'm yeah. sure there's shortcuts and stuff that we haven't even mm-hmm. looked yet, but there's a lot for web browser, web browsers. A lot of shortcuts that I don't know. I don't have off memory, but it's like you think uh, <laughs> grinding a kink rail is gonna be Dan's uh, downfall, but it's. <laughs> It's gonna be my computer, dude. The computer, it's dude. This shit, this stuff is like, it's the straw that I can't do it sometimes, man. Can't. I I I close my computer and walk away. It was it was three hours to get the microphone set up on my or to oh to get Zoom downloaded and the microphone set up. (laughs) I remember trying to uh, when I first started doing gigs with music, I had to like learn the whole sound stuff myself essentially because like no one Mm -hmm. else around me knew how to do it um like working a pa system and things like that Mm. and i literally had to do it trial and error just in my basement there's like thousands of knobs on these things (laughs) and you have like different mics set up you have you know different instruments and everything vocals and you're trying to adjust levels like not only the volumes but like the eq uh, like, why is this one only in one speaker? Like, figuring all this stuff out. Mm-hmm. And by the end, of, like, each day, you know, you figure out, like, one or two things and you have to step away. Because it, it, where a normal person, like, someone who could see could just look at it and be like, oh, this, yeah. this, this, this. And it's like, okay. And, like, now I have to make this mental map in my brain of this entire control panel yeah. of what each control is. And it's, like, just another thing. But once you... It takes hours upon hours upon hours, and now I get, like, excited to look at, like, soundboards, you know? Because it's mm. like, oh, man, I can't wait to, like, adjust the tone and the vo- like. But it's, the whole getting into that part is, like, 
A, it's it's hard for anyone, like, right away. And then B, if if you're blind on top of it, I think it's just, like, such an extra... It's just slow. Like you said, you can't just look at the panel. You gotta... Yeah, it's like... It, it like, even so when we were fixing your mic on setting this up, you're like, I don't know what this volume does, this knob does, but yeah. it's just messy. <laughs> then I'll forget by the time, because next time I'll use this mic will be weeks from now, and I'll be like, oh, okay. Forget it all. Yeah, it's... It's crazy. That's the thing with me, too, with voiceover with the computer. I'll be like, I'll spend three days in a row just learning so many different things. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, oh, I'm a pro now. Step away from my computer for like a week, forget yeah. everything. I'm like, oh, how do I do this? Oh, it's exhausting. That reminds me of a question we got. What's that? From uh, Anthony. Buddy Anthony in Sweden. He uh, emailed us. At Dan at Four Bad Eyes or Anthony at Four Bad Eyes. And he asked, when we create our content, do we do everything by ourselves or do we have help doing it? That's and a good uh, it's a, a good mix of both. Yeah, um, I'd, say, I'd say we are definitely not filming ourselves. Yeah. The amazing angles and uh, what would you call that? Cinema? Cinema, videography, Video cinematography is uh, is Kelly, my wife behind that, mm -hmm. and for the four bad eyes stuff. Yeah, she's filmed all that stuff, and she does all my stuff as well, and it's a collaboration on <clears throat> Dan and I's ideas. Like we kind of see the scenes and things in our head and kind of talk that out to Kelly, mm -hmm. and kind of helps that make that happen for us. Yeah. And everyone's just throwing ideas like, oh, no, you should do this. Anthony yeah, should do that. Anthony should do that. And then things kind of happen, you know, sometimes you have an idea of what you want to do. And then while you're doing it, the script kind of like it's all natural, like mm -hmm. on the spot, you know. Yeah, we'll have just an idea of like. Sometimes what... you'll say something, though. And you'll be like, ah, let me redo that line, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But it'll just be like a general idea, like going to the grocery store or cooking chicken thighs and then pretty much just start filming scene by scene you know what made you what made you start making content you started on vine didn't you vine yeah Wasn't i that did where you dude. started blind vine was my blind? handle was that your name yeah blind. i had blind everything instagram i was blind photo blind vine <laughs> does blind photo still exist uh it might still be out there it might be available now because oh. because back then it was only photos on the gram yeah that's what the gram was and then, like, uh, I think Snapchat, I was blind chatter. Because <laughs> blind chat was taken, I think. I was, like, blind, then whatever the app did is what I was. Oh, man. And Wait, then, so what made you, like, did you, was Vine the first app you were on? Uh, no, Instagram was definitely the first. And but that Vine was photos. Was like, but Vine was the first, like, video. Was it the that first was video? Like video? Yeah, that was videos, like, those short videos before they were, like, was. ever a thing. Yeah, they're like, eight-second videos. so ahead of the time. I Dude, it just disappeared one day. Gone. Really? With all your content? Gone. So That's weird. Insane. I think I had transitioned into Instagram, though, before Vine, like, actually just disappeared. Was there a thing that, like... Uh, it motivated you to get on social media or like kind of start doing those things because was your whole thing like like blind photos so I'm imagining was pictures taken by a blind person that was the whole like spiel yeah I, I had a username before that I think before I was blind and I never really like I maybe posted like I don't even know maybe 30 photos or something before that like through a couple years mm -hmm. and then I started losing my sight and I changed it to blind photo <laughs> And then just did random photos. <clears throat> but that's when I had, like, a good chunk of my vision still. You know, I was legally blind, but, like, I was still working at, like, the deli and stuff, chopping meat and, like... Were you reading your phone? Uh, like, no, I could uh, still see text. Yeah, I had, I had my text, like, the full, the biggest it could go. Yeah, 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 I know. Um, I wasn't using voiceover yet. And then, uh... But what got you on, like, what got you inspired to make those blind videos? Like my whole pushing back against the stigma and seeing the difference the way people treated me. And then I I wanted to like make videos of me doing things that you wouldn't expect a blind person to do. What was, that was like the first catalyst for it. What was like the... Like what were some of the big differences when you went blind that like 
you notice straight away people like treating you differently that was bothering you like the stigmas i guess all it's just using the cane and all the little stuff like people trying to like help you cross the street and stuff like i had people like when i'd be running i'd stop at like i'd be waiting for the traffic and people i had to do like get out of this car like at a traffic light and be like you need you all right you need help crossing the street no i'm like no dude i'm waiting for the 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 light to change, like, man. Keep running, man. Stuff like that, you know, like people running up to me trying to read me Bible verses, and all I kinds let of. Let them pray for me. I'm like, let them what? pray for you. Yeah, I always let them pray for me. I, I'm like, if it's listen, I'm open to any any healing. It was good. Well, I mean, I was like walking home from work one day, dude, and it was like dark. And I'm like, I just want to get home. I got I got done like massaging freaking for five hours. <clears throat> and some lady come up to me. Can I? Excuse me. Can I? Uh, can I read you something? I'm like, uh, okay, sure. And just goes into this first. She was like a Jehovah Witness, I think, and just went into this long, long Bible verse, dude. Oh, and I'm like halfway through. I'm like, okay, all right. Like I let her go. Sorry, she I finished it. <laughs> but it was like some verse like those who can't see something when they go to heaven will be able to see like a hawk and jump like a deer and all that I was just like all right dude all right, I'm good. thank you <clears throat> but yeah then walking around campus I had a lot of people because there's a lot of um at eastern they're like I don't know they're like a lot of I don't know if they're Christian I think they're a Christian like there's like nuns and stuff who go to school there yeah so a lot of people stop me there. Can I pray for you? Yeah, I'm just trying to get some chicken noodle soup, dude. I'm gonna break here, but sure. Dude, I pray. Pray it up. Man. Yeah. Prayer, man. But yeah, I mean that's whatever. But it was it's just the little stuff, like yeah, like in public with my lady and like having people like I, talk to her instead of me. You know what I mean? That's one of the worst. Yeah. I I hate that, and I hate that <clears throat> I get the talk louder a lot. Like mm-hmm. people when they see you you're blind they'll they'll start talking to me like super loud and slow <laughs> and i'm like oh my ears are actually pretty good like come on and yeah that stuff it like i don't know you know sometimes it's discouraging i'm like can you just i want to be like i just want to walk through my day as another normal person mm-hmm. just say hi just say- <laughs> that's it but then you're not even sure if they're saying hi to you wait so you so then you pu- started pushing against the stigma. Like, you made these videos because you wanted to start pushing against the stigma. Yeah. And how was that reaction? Like, what was the, like, it was, feedback you're getting? Like, what it was, was good. It? it was slow at first. And then the one, like, the first skateboarding video I posted was, uh, like, my first, like, like bigger video. Like, it got, because it got shared by the Tony Hawk Foundation, which you're is now the skate video. park. Which is now the skate park project. Mm-hmm. I was like, I just front boarded a little ledge that I made, and uh, yeah, I got like eleven hundred followers or something like that. And I was like, whoa, that was sick. On Instagram or Vine? On Gram, on the Instagram. Okay. I don't Did remember you what share my share your vines to the Gram. Is that the thing? And then I started push putting the Vine might have been gone at that point. Uh, no, I think it was still around. It was kind of a weird transition of like I just kind of stopped using Vine slowly, and just went to Instagram, because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's where I got traction at first, um, and then Vine went away. <clears throat> but I think I shared on both, like my videos, because um, even back then I think Instagram was only like I don't even know if it was thirty seconds or not their first videos. Can't remember, but yeah. So the Hog Foundation shared the post. Mm-hmm. And that got me a lot of traction. And then I went in like hard, like with every day, like posting no, like everything, like posting a video every day, pretty much, of everything, like all those old videos I posted on TikTok recently, like like the ones of you playing like can jam, yeah, darts, can jam, pink a beer pong, all that stuff. Yeah, those are fun. Just everything. Those are really good. Like Heather filmed those. Heather filmed all of them. Yeah, she spent hours filming some of those too. And then where was like so? How many followers? So you had like what, like twelve hundred followers now? Yeah, 
So yeah, it was like 13,000 followers. That's why, like, where yeah. was the big jump? And like, what? What? So you did you just start posting these videos every day? Yeah, for a while, and then the big jump. I think I maybe got up to like 6k right around there from doing your and videos. And then, yeah, and then Tony came to Detroit for a skate park opening. And uh, the one that they built there. Uh, they, it was like this temporary one downtown. Oh, okay. Before they built like the the big parks that are downtown now. Mm -hmm. Um, and I got invited to come skate a bit. Like he had like a little demo <clears throat> with some of the birdhouse dudes. So I came and skated and like had like fifty fifty this box or something, and he filmed it and then he shared it, and that's when I got like the biggest bump I think I've ever had of like. Uh, probably Thrasher was, but that jumped me like 30, 30k or something like that. Oh man, that feeling was probably crazy. The hawk, the the, the hawk, hawk bump, dude. Sharing your post. Like. Yeah, he posted and tagged me, and that gave me a huge jump. <clears throat> and then, uh, man, I don't know. I don't even. And then it was just kind of slowly growing more and more from there. Uh, skating stuff, getting hooked up from skating. Like I was still getting real boards then. When that, even when that got posted. So, like, the next big jump was getting posted on Thrasher, I think. Having a Thrasher part up. Um, you had a part? Yeah. Wh who filmed the part? My buddy Steve films all my stuff. Was that Steve. before Red Bull? Uh, n <coughs> that was after Red Bull. So Red Bull must have been a good jump, too. Did they reach out from the Hawk post? Um, like, is that man, I don't know. Stuff? It's kind of a blur. It must have been just from that. Yeah. Well, then I got I I, I got a lot of people reaching out from like uh, all of like um, like the online news people. Right. Like, who are the Buzz big Reed, online? Lad Bible. Yeah. All, all that. And I was doing all these interviews for those people. Mm -hmm. Like, like little Zoom meetings, Zoom interviews yeah, and right, stuff like right. that. Those little interviews and they'd overlay them. Yeah, and those, a bunch of those got like millions of views. Good, yeah. yeah, like each of them had like two, three million views. And those, so like all those ones jumped me up a bunch. Um, and then Red Bull must have been a big jump. Somebody reached out from their media department and was like, can we do a piece? Were you stoked on that? That I was hyped at, yeah. That was a cool piece. <clears throat> that was really fun because I, I got like my buddy... Uh, my homie Zach from Cali, who we started filming like a, uh, when I try to get um, a show, like launch a show, Blind Ambition. Mm -hmm. um, so he came out, I had like friends film it, Plenty, had a good yeah. time. So that was before I filmed even like a full part. Um, I was working on filming a full part at that time, pretty much. And that's when I met Steve, because I'm like, oh, I actually want to film a full-length street part. Um, but I, nobody I knew, like, really skated, like, seriously from, like, when I grew up. Uh, the people who did, like, move, I live in, like, Cali in New York, or in uh, North Carolina, New York. Mm -hmm. So I met, like, the generation behind me, like, the younger crew uh, who was st who's still out there grinding. So I got linked up with my buddy Steve. Uh, I remember the first thing we filmed, like an ollie faking on a bank and then a, tray f a fakie tray flip. Oh, man. And uh, he's like, oh, all right, we got to film the full part. <laughs> that was the first clip, and that was the beginning of that. And then we filmed TCB, Taking Care of Business, and then that got posted on Thrasher through Reel and all those dudes. And then that's when I got, that's when I, first time I went over 200K was after that. Let's see. That was the big bump. And I've been stuck there ever since. <laughs> Have you, uh, like the, I'm sure you got like amazing responses from people. Like, was that kind of encouraging you to keep going, like doing what you're doing? Yeah, I'm already, I was already kind of fully in it at that point. Like, like I know for me, dude, some stoked. days you're like, why am I doing this? Like, some days I really question, it's like this imposter syndrome. You know, mm -hmm. you're like doing well and you're, you know, growing or everything you're doing, you know, starting to like take off a little bit. And then you're kind of like, well, who am I, dude? Like, 
you know. Mm-hmm. Like, and some days, like, it's hard for me to even, like, just, like, e- even pay attention to anything and, and even just, like, like go, I'm almost going through the motions and then I get, like, a message from someone saying, you know, like, I saw your documentary, like, you don't understand, this really, like, changed my life. Like, crazy mm-hmm. messages and, it, it, like, it blows me away. Like, I've cried from, all, like, many messages that people have sent me and, like, mm-hmm. and I'm... I just like kick myself in the back of the head and I'm like, dude, you know, you're like, you're selfish if you don't keep going. You know? Yeah, you gotta it's keep like, going. I mean, to. especially the social media stuff, I definitely burnt out on that. Of like, I was burnt out like probably like a year after the TCB part, half a year after, just like over it. <clears throat> I only just kind of got back into it really. But, like, I was, I'm just focused on, like, just skating, you know what I mean? And then I had grad school, too. So I was just, like... I remember just sitting, like, (coughs) sitting in my room being, like, just even as a kid, you know, when people ask me, what do you want to do when you grow up? I would literally say, I just want to be able to help, like, other people. And I I still say it, and in my speech is, like, if I could help one person at the end of the day, like, that's actually a win for me, and it's worth doing what I do, and now that I'm able to reach so many more people and get these like responses and stuff, it's amazing. It's like, you know, you never, yeah, these platforms are like the best way to do it. Honestly, to reach the most people. Yeah. It's doing what we're doing. It's incredible. Like make so many new connections and friendships to through it. It's it's wild. I would have never known who you were if it wasn't for social media. (laughs) It's true. Yeah. I'm like, did you say thing? I don't get like, what? Did you know who I was before Modern or not no. really? No. No, not really. I didn't think so. Like, I knew, like... Because I've, like, DM'd you probably in the past, I think, and it just went to your, like... I don't know. I might have. And I just, uh... I should look uh, if I can like, find He's got, like, 200,000 followers. Dude. Is that... <laughs> no, I answer I answer everybody who DMs me. I know you me. do, except... Yeah. Wait, you said this on a Lost episode. Dan tries to answer every... DM except one accidentally got deleted. One like, got deleted, dude. I answer all my DMs too, but that is so funny. So <laughs> if you're out there and you think Dan's an asshole because he didn't respond to your DM, he accidentally deleted it. DM me again. Will it come through? I think so, man. <laughs> there was one kid, dude. I remember deleting. I was like, no. Oh. I feel man. horrible. That is. That's but yeah, I don't even get stoked. Like I'm not stoked on like the like my followers count or like how a video does. Like that doesn't get me like like that stoked anymore. But like the the messages from people like you said who like exactly those are the ones who are like oh yeah that that is why that is why I'm doing it exactly like that's why I made this page. Dude, I've gotten videos that have gotten ten views like like a hundred views and sometimes from those videos i'm like oh why did i even post that sometimes those videos i'll get the best messages from yeah I'll be like wow i needed to post that video yeah and it's exactly. like this is it doesn't matter about the counts the followers it's literally about the quality of like the people uh-huh. and, and building those relationships and connections like i said dude it's, i love it it's crazy you connect with people all around the world met a lot of people dude through person. that our uh, fan from Sweden. What's up? Or like your friend from Sweden. Our friend from Sweden. What about him? Yeah. I'm saying we connect from people all around the oh, world. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Got a exactly. question from Sweden today. Sweden! Sweden. Buddy Anthony and Matilda, Dude. what up? Uh, and their little baby. I had I had one time I had these uh, Swedish fish that were actually from Sweden. <laughs> they were bigger, like the the candy you know and they're just big. yeah it was amazing the candy there is incredible a little red fish yeah, big red no, fish. no they were different colors i think were they yeah it was it wasn't like the swedish fish you imagine do you know if that's actually from sweden that like, yes that, that one is no no from- that one the red ones i'm not sure okay but the ones that i used to get swedish fish. they were swedish fish Swedish fish, a real Swedish fish is probably like a can of sardines, dude. (laughs) Oh my gosh, sardines. I would never eat a sardine. Oh, I just ate some the other day, dude. Dude, my buddy used to like, we'd go fishing and he would 
<clears throat> have the sardine in the can and like cut off the what you cut off the tail or something and you eat it with the cracker. Yes. Disgusting. I didn't cut the tail off. You just chop that thing. Or the head. You cut the head off. They're intense, dude. Salty. I had, I had cooked up a little uh, chicken thigh recipe, actually, with some sardines and Ew. capers. Oh, so good. Disgusting. Dan's That's a good a chef, though. Chef Boy RD, baby. <laughs> chef D boy stands RD. for Dan. D. <laughs> We had a big snowstorm here the other day, like yesterday or two days ago. It was the biggest snowstorm since like the early 2000s. Like, damn! I like went out. We have a back alley in my um, in my apartment, and the alley had like a snowdrift that I'm not kidding was two and a half feet deep. <laughs> I went out there to take Delta to the bathroom because she wouldn't go with by herself in the morning because of the yeah. snow, and because it was still dumping down too. And I go it was like an there. inch an hour or something Dude, like that. Well, it was maybe yeah. more too at one point. And I go out there and my it was past my knees, and I'm in like boots and sweatpants, yeah. and I'm just like, oh no. And, and she had to hop like through it kangaroo. like she can't touch. She can't. She can't. Uh, she can't walk, so she's just hopping through the snow. It's so <laughs> funny. And then uh, I, I, uh, I built my first ever igloo. It was pretty awesome. Oh, dude, igloo's where it's at. I like, dude. My cousin came over at night, and we started. Uh, there's this wall outside, and we started throwing the snow against the wall. Yeah, piling it up. Just he dug out the, the tunnel. And yeah. Dude, when I went in there, it's literally like soundproof. It's insane. I want yeah, to record sick. a podcast in there. We need to record. <laughs> it's it's insane. Like I I wanted to sleep out there. Delta like got all scared, my dog, and she like started pulling me out. Like she went in and started oh, really? pulling me out by the arm. It was so funny. Dude, igloos are sick. It is oh, like a sick. I thought they were like impossible to make because my my uh thought of them was like you had to make those perfect like square ice bricks <laughs> right like, yeah is that even a real thing yeah those yeah those are hardcore yeah it's a real deal but this one like i was like damn i want to make like a igloo mansion now that i know how to do it it's so sick it's scary though the you need the right snow that snow that can be in. compacted though yeah yeah i haven't been able to do one this year we did one i did one last year with my son and stuff also they had these uh sick they had these snow, like, from all the plows, they had these piles of snow. Yeah. I'm not kidding. They're, like, 50 feet high. Mm-hmm. And, like, so high. You have to climb up them pretty steep. And I brought the snow skate up and, like, snow skated down <laughs> one of them. It was insane. I, like, ate shit the first time. That's what I was saying. The sledding, the one sledding hill is like that. That's what you launch off. That is, like, the ramp. That's insane. So you come down the hill and you hit the one side of that and you launch off it and you land on the other side. Oh my god. It's amazing. No, this you go down it and you're in the street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the streets were covered with ice. We're actually supposed we're getting a snowstorm uh when does it start? There's like all these advisories right now. We're oh, supposed to get so like, awesome. dumped we on so like unprepared. fourteen inches. We were so unprepared. It like it uh we we ate all the frozen food out of our freezer we had like no food <laughs> we, like, started, like, like what do we do damn dude i love a good snowstorm dude just yeah. dumping oh man that was a good one snowed in dude well uh it'll be past when this comes out it'll already happen but we're going to florida yeah oh man i can't be in the warm dude warm dude i it's hard to even skate in the cold because you're like Hurts. It hurts so bad. It hurts, dude. Anything. I love when the dog can't touch though. When they gotta hop. <clears throat> Yo, so oh, that's the other thing. So <laughs> we're like, we have to go to the city last night to my buddy's, uh, like, uh, my buddy and photographer his his birthday. We went out to dinner there with him, and. The snow drift in the back alley was, it, it like I said, it was huge. Like, the <laughs> car could not get over it. So I had to shovel out it. As oh, yeah. <laughs> and I shovel out. <laughs> shovel out. So it's like, the way it works, it's like an alley. So, or a parking spot that you have to back up. 
and like turn left or right and go out the alley and the alley's pretty long so the whole alley is drifted like there's snow the snowbank is insane like, mm-hmm. <coughs> um all n- the town does not plow back there at all i don't know why but I do the whole, like, path that, you know, like, make it, like, somewhat safe. And then I didn't get to finish. And Kelly's like, wait, let me just try. And she, like, <laughs> drives, gets all the way through, like, where I shoveled. And then goes to drive over the drift. And it just gets stuck. Like, all of a sudden, you need the car is, like, going, going. And then it's just, like, and you Wheels just, are just like, spinning. Wheels spinning. And all of a sudden, like, I'm like, no. Oh, so, first of all, when I shoveled the area... I shoveled the whole area, and then she's like, yeah, but if I need this spot shoveled because or, or else it's going to drift like into this dumpster. And I was like, are you kidding me? I literally just shoveled all the snow on it. Yeah, un- <laughs> this is like heavy snow. So yeah. I, and then I had to shovel all the snow I shoveled over like a different area, basically. So <laughs> double shovel, and then car gets stuck, and uh, I'm like, Oh no! This I'm like pouring sweat at this point, dude. Shoveling <laughs> is such a workout. Like I'm in like a snow jacket, like gloves, snow pants, and I'm shoveling the car out now. So I'm like, all right, well I just have to do it. Start shoveling out the wheels because I'm like, that's you know, it's gotta be the wheels. You know, they just need because there's snow all over them. And I, I shovel it out like two feet for the wheels. All right, try it now. And she goes, starts. Going, I was like, I try to back it up, and she tries back it up. Start hearing burning rubber, and like, I just start smelling it so bad. I'm like, all right, all right, stop. Like, we need to figure this out. Cut the undercarriage. You got to dig all that the out. The car, dude, and the whole bottom of the car, it's compacted snow from like driving over it. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. Really good packing snow, and it's completely just clogged up. Like the whole thing is stuck. I had to take the shovel, like, dig out under and also get on my – I got on my stomach, like, and under the car. And I had to just like, scooping with my it. gloves and just keep scooping it. <laughs> and finally we, like, got out. It was just – that was – I was so mad. I remember I was like, if you just waited, I was so mad. Like, I started <laughs> – got inside. I didn't say a word. And then Kelly's like, well, at least it was a good workout. And I was like <laughs> – I'm so mad right now. Like, that's what I said, and I had to, like, cool off for a second. Because I was just, like, heated, literally. Like, I was pouring sweat, like, through my pants. Like, <laughs> like going to dinner, too? You're about to go to dinner? Yeah, and I had no <laughs> hair ties at the mo- at the time, so, like, my, <laughs> my hair was, like, overheating me, too. And it was just not a good And then there's, there's, like, three people coming up, like, from all these, like, spectators from, like, the out, like the streets. Like, ah, you're stuck, like, laughing. Uh, like, oh, no, you're stuck. Like, this is bad. And I'm like, it's snow, guys. Like, everyone chill out. Like, <laughs> enough with negative. No one helped, dude? No one helped, dude. Everyone just was like, oh, man. Something fun about helping the. I know. Helping a neighbor get out on the snow, rocking the car back and forth to right. get him out. I, I yeah. tried the rock. That yeah. That's usually the method that works, dude. Oh. Get it going. That was. I was. We were on the ice one time <clears throat> on a lake here on Big Lake, and uh, there's a car that got stuck, and he's just spinning. <clears throat> I'm like, well, let's go walk over. There's like a couple hundred yards away. Walked over there, rocking the car. I'm like in front of the car, and like it's all slushy, and I step down and I go. Literally, my leg sinks in slush all the way to my waist. <laughs> like, my whole leg goes down. I'm like, whoa, dude, that was sketchy. I don't know what it is, right? Almost felt like it was the weirdest thing. Because, like, I didn't hit water. But, like, the ice was probably a couple feet thick. But right there, it was just, like, all slush. It was, like, sketch, dude. But then, like, the truck ended up coming over and pulling them out. Speaking of falling in, dude, I... I was, uh, for my, one of my birthdays when I was younger, we went to the, I don't know why we went there, but we went to a, um, paintball range, like a paintball gun yeah. shooting range, or like range, or you, you know, have battles and stuff, mm-hmm. and there's different courses, it was like a big, uh, place, and they're all outdoor courses, there's like one that's like a wood, like treehouse, jungle, 
forts and all that <laughs> stuff. And there's one that's like bouncy stuff. You like hide behind all this different stuff. And I'll never forget. I was like so pumped. <laughs> uh, and I'm running through this one. So I'm having a battle. I, I'm on like my cousin's team, my cousin Jack. And we're running through the woods. And I'm just like basically, uh, for some reason, I got in front of him. I was like following him. But then I got in front of him. We're running. <laughs> we ran up this like wooden like tree house thing that had like a bridge going across. So I'm running across the bridge. And we're like 30 feet up in the air. And there's just like trees and like uh woods underneath and we're running all of a sudden i literally drop i'm <laughs> dude there was the end right and there was no like no barrier or anything and all of a sudden i'm falling and i put my arms out and like catch myself like pure instinct but literally like it was a fall to like breaking something you know what i mean like this was really bad and like i all of a sudden just thought i was about to die and immediately put my hands up and catch myself. I'm like, what is happening? And, like, I don't know what's under me. And I'm just dangling. And my cousin's like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're hanging on to the bridge yes. thing at this point? Yes. <laughs> it's, like, out of a movie. And my cousin's like, I got you. And, like, had what? my armpits, like, pick me up, dude. It was, like, really sketchy. How was there no barrier? Yo, I don't know. It was a very old thing that was like it was old rotted wood like this thing was dangerous i don't know how it was still there dude you caught yourself from falling i caught myself dude and how did you catch yourself because you were running forward immediately put my arms so there were things on the side so there must have been the way it was <laughs> there must have been um like boards missing from the uh bridge thing yeah. Because there was a barrier in front, like in front of the gap. And yeah. Also, two things on my sides. So I reached oh, out immediately and grabbed the <laughs> side. And I didn't even know they were going to be there. I, that was my reaction. And dude, I, what? I can't believe it, dude. I see it perfectly in my head to this day. And it was one of the most terrifying things. Like, I was just immediately falling into... I couldn't see the ground. So I thought it, what I thought was, like, just a black hole. <laughs> so I'm hanging on for dear life. My cousin Jack is, like, running behind me. And he's like, oh, it! Like, no! <laughs> It, like, picks me up, dude. Like, I remember I had to, like, take a long break after that. I was like... Dude, did you drop out. your gun? Dude, yeah, I did. My gun was gone. I was... Oh, my God, dude. That is sketchy, oh, dude. Oh, man, that was a birthday to remember. You almost died, that dude. definitely a birthday to remember. Falling. Oh, my gosh. With no... That wasn't like me falling in the river, dude. Just fucking nothing under your feet. Yeah. <laughs> That's such intense. a good story. And at the I'm same, done after that, same, dude. I'm tapped out. Same shooting range. I uh, I would have never went back again, dude. I, my first time. It was my first time ever going paintballing. And I, like, went into one, one of the forts <laughs> while there's a fight going on, like a, a battle. And I just start, like, I can't see, dude. Like, and I just start. Uh, I go in the door. And just start unloading my like paintballs, and all of a sudden I like hit my cousin in the mouth, one of my cousins, <laughs> and he's like, "Yo, you're aiming at the wrong. Like this is our side. Like they're on the <laughs> other side." And I'm like, "I'm like point blank away from him." Shot him in the, him in the like, face. He's like spitting paint out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Throwing a grenade, dude. Oh man. Oh man, I want to go paintballing. Paintballing, that was, that was a good one. Those paintball guns are sick, dude. Dude, that was, that was... I was just so... I remember at the end... Oh, same day, <laughs> the end of it. It's me and my brother versus my mom in this one course. It's like these bouncy, like, targets, like... You and your brother versus your mom? Yeah, it was... I don't know how it ended up that Your mom's way. like, I got you chumps, yeah, dude. Let's go. Yeah. And next thing you know, me and my brother, like, ambushed her. We're, like, attacking her. Like, <laughs> she had, like... Dude, we had, like, bruises all over. My mom's, like, knees were, like, soaked in paint. <laughs> she got, like, ambushed. We, like, hit her so many times. It was so fun, though. This is in Jersey? Yeah. My mom always, like, 
Does that spot her, still exist? We gotta go to that. Dude. I know. I think it does. My mom always made like she had five kids, and like I was definitely a handful, and so are some of us. But like, especially just the whole blindness thing was it was a lot, you know. And she did so much extra. Mm-hmm. Like, she always made sure like we had a good time, or like it was, yeah. just, you know, it was amazing. I can't believe the things that woman's done for us. Thanks, Mrs. Ferraro. Thank you. Love Clark. you, Mom. Clark, dude. Is that the original Clark, dude? Oh, I'm going to see Clark West in Cali, baby. Oh, you are, yeah. Clark West, dude. Let me get a haircut for my cuz, hopefully. Oh, sick. Chop it off, dude. Let me chop it off. Yeah, right. Shave that beard, dude. Shave that beard. I do need a beard. You going to shave your beard before you go to the hot weather? No, I'm going to trim it, though. Mm-hmm. I say they're gonna be sweating out there. I haven't dude. been baby face in a long time. One time I uh last time I actually shaved my face <laughs> completely. <laughs> I went to this barber and so we're about we're visiting Kelly's parents when they lived in New York and we're about to go to this we're about to go out to dinner. And I think I, you told I, this one. Did I? It was on Lost though. I don't know. Yeah, go quick. I think the, you did, but yeah. The barber go. freaking... I, I went to the barber, and I was like, I was just going to get a beard trim. They left, and I, go, I was like, I just shave it off. Like, to the guy, I had, like, a thick beard. He straight razored it off, but, like, they must have not known what they were doing because they didn't use, like, any products or anything, like, in the beginning <laughs> until, like, after or something. And he didn't use any aftershave or anything. And I remember leaving this place. My face felt like it was, like, stinging really bad. It looked like he got like, like swarmed by stinging. mosquitoes, dude. And Kelly's like, oh, my God. Like, what <laughs> happened? You know? She's like, there's, uh, my face is, like, I didn't know it was red all over. I had these bumps everywhere. Like, it was so bad. I'm out to dinner with the family. I'm just like, oh, this is so What happened bad. to you, Aunt? That, so that's, that's actually why I haven't gotten a shave since. Because I don't want that happening. Would you slide in the first base, dude? What happened? <laughs> my brother did so for <laughs> for the big Christmas Eve party at my dad's side, the Italian side. My brother was grabbing my face and like twisting it, so it made like these like hickey marks like on my chin and like oh, my no. cheek and stuff. And yeah, as soon as I walk in, my uncle's like, "Damn, what did you slide in the first base, dude? Oh, What's God. going on?" I uh, <clears throat> dude, I, I got a. One time, my buddy like licked his hand, and then started rubbing my leg hair in like a circular motion. Oh yeah, and <laughs> dude! And all of a sudden, I was like, "What the hell are you doing?" And all of a sudden, I like go to straighten my leg, and it was such weird pain, like <laughs> worst pain. I was like, "What?" Yeah, like oh, dude, what like twists and knots all your leg yeah, hairs. And up. all of a sudden, the next thing you do, I look at my leg, like I'm feeling it. My there's like dreadlocks in my leg. <laughs> All knotted up together. <laughs> my brother used to do that to me, and then you do the turkey where you just like high five like your back when you don't have a shirt on. Just oh like, man. Damn, turkey. Five star. You son of a bitch, dude. Oh, that what else would they do? Indian burns were classic, dude. Native American burns. <clears throat> Some worse, dude. Brothers used to beat me up. Used to sit on my like you know, do the classic where I was the smallest one. Where they just like knees on your like on your back and then they're like mounted on your chest, dude. With knees on the arms and you just can't do anything. My brothers, yeah, because I had two older brothers Ugh. and they used to beat the crap out of me. Not so much. Like I remember, I used to see that. I'm like, dude, they used to get brawls because they were closer in age. Um, yeah, John, like they would get in, like fights over like clothes or like. Yeah, just different stuff because they would sh- they both lived in the basement. They had two separate rooms, but like we're close to get. Like, you wear my stuff. short, dude. Why'd you wear my shirt? Like, Where's my button up at? And they would freak. I remember watching them like fight fr- from the upstairs to the yeah, downstairs. just going Down at it. Stairs going at it. I'd be so <laughs> scared, but I'd be so like my adrenaline would be pumping. Yeah. I'm so emotional. <laughs> like I feel everyone else's emotions, and I'm in the background. I'm like, stop, stop, stop. And they won't stop. Going at it. And then the next time, like, when I got a little older, I was like, yeah, like, get him. Like, I'd be yeah. so... I'd be such an instigator. Oh, man. Until they... Oh. I watched my brother... 
<laughs> we used to do all kinds of dumb crap. My brother Nick had a, uh, we were in the backyard. We had this like little shed when I lived in East, East Detroit. A little shed in the back. And we took all like, you know, black cat fireworks or like the little yeah. tiny yeah, yeah, yeah. ones that just blow up. Like unstrand all of them and then empty all of the powder out of them into a pile. <laughs> Until it's like this little mound of gunpowder or whatever it is, dude. And like we had my uh, dad's a cop and he had all these friends who were firefighters. So we got this old firefighter helmet. So he has the firefighter helmet on with the mask down. And he's trying to light the pile of, of powder or whatever. And like it won't light, won't light. And then it just fucking goes up. And I just watched like his entire head and face just get engulfed in a flame. Just like... Whoosh. <laughs> but he had the helmet on. I was just like, whoa, dude. <laughs> My brother Ollie did that. He, one time, I remember I was at him and his girlfriend's house, or I was at his girlfriend's house, and he poured lighter fluid over his arm. Oh, and lit it. And lit yeah. it on fire. And I was like, what the hell are you doing? I was like freaking out. And. I didn't realize it didn't. I was like that, and then you can put those black cats in your hand as long as your hands open. You can light them on your hand. Don't do that at all. And they just go boom. <laughs> it's like just scary. What else? We used to take the garden hose, dude, and throw it over the shed, and then like rappel down it and like up it and like climb the shed and just crap, like tie it to the fence on the other side. It's like so sketch, dude. <laughs> Did you play any sports growing so up? So much fun. I played soccer. Really? For like four years when I was a kid, kid. Dude, that was my favorite sport when I was younger. It's fun. I was center two years and goalie two years. I used to play until I like couldn't. I just realized that like was worthless in soccer in terms of like passing to me and stuff like. That. Yeah. Like, I can't do this. And then. Yeah, I got. Like, I remember I got pneumonia once soccer. playing in the rain. I was a diving champion for a couple years. In a diving, row. dude, yeah. diving sick. But not like the high dive stuff. Off like a regular diving. Yeah, thing. yeah. I do like uh, two and a half, three front flips. Yeah. And like it was, it was fun. I can only do one and a half. I could, I could get two, but just like fucking barely scratch it. I haven't done it in years. No, the, one dude on the, now. my buddy Nate, my best friend, was like on the diving team. And there was a dude on the team who could touch the ceiling. And this was like a four-story, I think, like three or four stories. And they had like that drop ceiling. That's and he used to jump on that little two-and-a-half-foot board or whatever, like higher, higher, higher. And just like Wait, one no. last big one and just reach up and just barely just touch the fucking ceiling. Oh, dude. we used to do like the four bounces, right? Like, I mean, it was like probably bounce. more than four, but yeah, just yeah, keep yeah, going and going. Cool would do that. Oh. It's crazy how high you can like get. How you think the board's about to break? Yeah, it's insane. It touches the water. Yeah, and it's like no, fly. Yeah, it was I grew up crazy. going to the because the beach here has a pool, like on the boardwalk, basically, mm -hmm. it's like a gazebo type thing, and there's a pool with a diving board. So I grew up going to that as a kid, and like going to the beach and the pool back and forth, back and forth, and. I just, like, I loved the diving board. Could you do gainers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or, like, back I dives, too? Yeah. I used to be able to run uh, forward, turn, bounce, and do a backflip, too. Turn? Like, so you run forward, like, you're running off, you're running to the end of the diving board, mm -hmm. and then you do a 180 and then bounce on the diving board and do a backflip. Oh. So you like turn into like the position to do a backflip, like your yeah, back yeah, space yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I never got too good at it. <clears throat> yeah. One and a half is the best I could do. I think I still got it. I used to probably do one and a half. I used to do front flips on flat ground. I have dreams where I, I'm like diving all the time too. Really? Like trying to get a good dive. I want to go scuba diving really badly. I'm not into it, dude. Freshwater fish, dude. This guy. I guess I could go in fresh water, but... I want to go scuba diving in the ocean. Yeah. It does feel so sick down there. Dude. Just put rocks in your shorts and just sink, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's the move. Speaking of paintballs, you got a favorite color, dude? Uh, favorite color, green. 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 I like green, blue, and purple. Yeah. Do you still care about, like, color, like, of your house and stuff? 
I don't know. Like, growing up, I used to care, like, what color my mom was going to paint my room and stuff uh-huh. like that. And I, I couldn't even see it, honestly. Yeah. But, like, I still care, yeah, about, like, what color clothes I'm wearing and stuff. Your clothes, like, yeah. I don't know. I, it's just, it's a visual world. So it's like, you got to remember that, too, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you can't see yourself, but people can. I know you, don't, like, don't care about what you look like, but you want to at least look like presentable yeah you don't want to look like a slouch and give a bad name to blind people like yeah that's true i find myself caring less and less more and more yeah but i guess i care about matching but see i don't if i know i'm not matching yeah, <laughs> yeah that that doesn't i guess that doesn't even bother i just like to <clears throat> excuse me colors i don't know man i like colors i i think because i used to do a lot of like art too mm-hmm. and like that was the one thing still, what you used like, to draw paint yeah like a lot of painting and drawing mm. my mom's an artist mm. she, she uh she actually started the art program in the school for the blind i went to she's a jack of all trades dude artist own m yeah i'm gonna start doing art again too i really want to i used to do pastel she used to like do all these amazing art pro like projects there at school for the blind that were like tactile things like we did paper mache one time it was really cool and like, paper mache is fun oh, yeah it was so fun and we did all these like mixed media arts you know where you're incorporating like different layers and textures yeah so that stuff was really cool i won a few art contests growing up did you like national too would you paintings yes dude i one time <laughs> i drew this so we're driving home i forget where but i'm in the car with my parents and it's like this really like cool night out i don't know why it was just such a beautiful night and i could see a little bit there was the they kept pointing out the moon to me and it was so bright right Mm -hmm. over the ocean i couldn't see the ocean or anything but i knew it was there and we're driving along the ocean and the moon is just so freaking bright and it's like it's almost like a foggy night too so it was very weird and my mom was like anthony just like remember that like take a picture of it in your mind you know mm-hmm. and we get home and i take out the pastels and i just start drawing and i drew this picture of it was uh it was that scene but it, i like tweaked it in my mind you know it was like what i created in my head so yeah. like the purple black was sky. your interpretation of yeah the, so yeah. it was like a purple black sky with like this yellowish uh moon that like this like greenish fog was coming through right and then there was a tree on either side like on the ground and then it was just kind of like that and the moon went into the ground because in my like mind it was the ocean basically (laughs) and uh i i like just drew that like thinking nothing of it i was like this is awesome you know and she entered in this contest i ended up winning like nationally i won like a prize and all this stuff and then ended up putting it on like display in this like it was like art exhibit and someone bought it for like two hundred and seventy five dollars i remember like what he sold it and i was like i was probably like 10 years old and i was <laughs> so stoked i was like oh, i'm gonna do art for the rest of my life <laughs> i'm gonna be an artist and this is sick dude i'm and rich I'm, dude i'm so stoked and i I don't think I've ever made anything as good as that. But yeah, dang, I kind of want that painting, but, uh, dude. It was really cool. Where's was, that painting at, dude? Dude, I don't know. Where Damn. Was that? What'd you call it, dude? Moon? <laughs> yeah, I think it was like midnight or something. Sick. Sold your first so painting, sad, dude. dude. I, I just, dude, art is a very expressive thing. Like, you know, it, there's no, like, right or wrong when doing it a certain way like some people have their thing where they want to make things look perfect but Mm -hmm. to me it's really cool because it's like your perception of things and one time i drew a really cool picture i thought you know it was all these different lines of color and stuff and it was kind of like my how i see music like in my head when music's playing Mm -hmm. like do you when you have different sensations like listening to something or say you're at like you know fishing doing all those things do you have like does it kind of put images in your head or do you see things or um like 
Yeah, it's all, yeah, yeah, I, I picture, I put it all together, yeah. Like, you go out, you're, so your vision is black, right? Mm-hmm. But do you, you're, the way I'd imagine is you're not seeing black all the time, because when it's, when everything's black for me, I'm still seeing things, like, in my mind, that I'm just creating pictures all the time. So, like, do you do that in your head, or how does that work? Um, I think it's only when I, th when I think back on the memory. I put an image to it, but if I'm, when I'm in the moment, it's more just like what I'm feeling. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm yeah. not imagining anything. It's all about like just feel. Yeah, it's it's not necessarily like an image of something, but more it's, just like. But you're not focused on your sight being turned off. You're so <clears throat> in that. Emotion, yeah, not at right? all. I'm just like an awareness of like. That's exactly. Of what what's around me, like okay, I know that's over there. That's over there. Like, sometimes I'll be so into something, and then I'm like, what What happened? I, like, blacked out in that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, I'll get lost like that, yeah. like, zoning out and be like, wait, where am I? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, but I don't, like, yeah, it's not like when I'm, like, I'm, like, ice fishing. Like, I'm not, like, imagining the hole or anything. I just know, like, hole's about at two feet in front of me. My door opening is to my left. Right, and then like that's it, and then just off of like feel. And you're, but you're so, you're so in that ice fishing that it's like, all your emotion and every energy is kind of put into that that you're not thinking about, not like about. Yeah, it's all that. into what I'm feeling, the actual feeling so of the, the rod and stuff. It starts to become the images. Like it's not, Im it's not per se like images, but th that becomes like the emotion, like what you're feeling is instead of your what you're seeing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's that's where I'm. Then I'm drawing my reaction and emotion from for sure. Really but then when I think back, like catching a fish, like I definitely visualize what the fish like an actual image of a fish in my hand. You know what I mean? Right. I do paint a picture like that for my memories. From your memories and uh -huh. added on with the texture and like the tactile, or not really? Just p probably just past memories. You know what I mean? Of, yeah. Of. Of what I think that would look like. Like when I think of the last fish I caught, like I have an image of an actual fish of what it actually looked like in my See, head. My, and my image is probably so different than what yours is. Mm hmm. Like the bank that I have. Yeah, that's what I'm curious. Like someone who was born total blind, like. Like blackness. Yeah, their memories are just, just a little different than I'm, that. Like I'm just all if, feel. That's crazy. This is why we need a Googler. But I'm curious if like so, there's any studies like. I'm sure there are about people that have seen black their whole life and, you know, like when listening, to, even I do it when listening to music, I do have different emotion or like images or like visual type things go through my mind, even like sound wave type things. Like it feels mm. like that, you know, and I don't know. I'm just curious if they, they see something like that or like, are they creating like, what are colors to a, a person that's seen black? Yeah. Like, what's their perception of a color? Yeah, like, my when I listen to music, it's, like, more just, like, connecting, like, the emotions that I had from past events and memories, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, that feeling you get no, same of, like... here. Yeah. That, like, I have total, in my mind, which in a, another person's mind, they wouldn't be able to see shit. But if, but for me, it's like I can see almost perfectly in my mind because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was able to see better when I was littler. But I feel like I can even see better than I ever saw in my mind. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, oh yeah, yeah, so for sure. Crisp and bright and like vivid that it's like wow, you know, like why can't I live in that? Yeah, my memories from yeah are like a perfect. They're the same as when I was sighted. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, my memories are the same, like, visual clarity as when I was sighted as they are now. Exactly. But we got to like get that. someone on here that was born blind, like, totally blind. Mm -hmm. And ask them some of these questions. That Someone that would be uh, open to doing that. Wine, was Weinmayer totally blind? No, no. He was a he was, Yeah, he had, like, a tumor or something. No, he had a... Uh, this is why we need a freaking Googler. If you're a good Googler out there... You Google. You like Googling? You like looking things up? And you want yeah, we might be looking for an intern, yeah. possibly on here, dude. But uh, we'll help if you want to reach out. 
Some take an application. I'm really interested to get deeper into this stuff on another episode because I, yeah. I want to know. But awesome. This is uh, this has been a good one, man. Um, good times. Hopefully this quality is nice and crispy. Try to yep. keep it up. It's going to get better as we go every time. So. Yes. Four bad eyes. I'm Dan Mancina. My personal pages are Dan the Mancina, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook is Dan Mancina. And then we are Four Bad Eyes across the board. You can contact me, Dan, at fourbadeyes.com. And I'm Anthony ASF Vision, Anthony Ferraro. And I love you guys. Contact yep. us. Thank you for sending in the questions. Um, I hope you have an amazing night. Yeah, talk to y'all next week. Much love. Oh, one love. Keep pushing. We made it. Keep pushing and one love from four bad eyes.